Hey everyone and welcome to the video. In this video I want to talk about inversion of control and dependency injection and why you should care about it, like what the benefits are. And I'll also be showing you how to do dependency injection without any frameworks like Spring. So let's get into it. So first off, what is inversion of control? With IOC you quite literally invert the control flow of the program. So traditionally a computer program would run and it would run sequentially and then it would execute functions and then for instance wait for the user to input something and then block the whole program before continuing. So the code itself was in complete control of the flow of the program. With IOC you want to modularize your application, you want to break it apart into different subroutines. When you write code like this, you write it as if you don't know when it will be executed because you actually don't. It will be called upon by an external piece of code, by an external caller. As an example, imagine an application that uh, gives us a user interface and then prompts the user to input things like their name or address or whatever. This is a single application, so both the user interface as the logic that processes the user's answers are all in the same code base. So basically it spins up, it draws the user interface and then asks something to the user like what is your name and then it will block waiting for the response. And when you want to apply the concept of inversion of control to this application, you would actually break it apart. So the user interface would be a separate application and then also the subroutine or service that would take the user's name and process it would also be separate, would be an external piece of code. Okay, and what about dependency injection? Dependency injection is actually a more concrete form of inversion of control. Basically, when you are writing an application and you are using a dependency, you can just instantiate it in your class and then use it. When you want to invert the control flow of an application like this, you can actually let the calling party decide what kind of dependency this application should use. You are letting the calling class inject the needed dependency into your application. I know this sounds fake and we will get into an example really soon, but first, why should we care about this? What are the benefits? The first benefit is configurability. So basically with dependency injection, you can change what kind of dependency you want to inject into your application. So let's say you are using databases and you want to switch what type of database you are using. You can then just inject a different implementation of the database service and your application will still keep on working. The second benefit is testability. It ties a bit into the previous uh, benefit of configurability, but basically when you use dependency injection, you can then choose to inject a mock of a surface. So taking the database example from the previous uh, benefit, uh, you might not want to test against a live database. So you can then just inject a mock of the database surface and then run your unit test against mocked data. The third benefit is loosely coupled code. By using dependency injection, you will most likely avoid using concrete implementation classes and program against interfaces. This will also help with the previous two benefits and it will overall increase the maintainability and the flexibility of your code. Okay, with these concepts explained, now let's get into the demo. All right guys, now we are onto the demo. So here you can see I have a main class with a main method we have already uh, got an application here, a very cool application, and it does some stuff. So let's say after the application does some stuff, we want to notify the user and we want to send them a message. So let's create a class down here quickly called email service. And we will just create a method that sends a message taking a string. And for now we will just print it out. and append the message there. So when, when we're not using dependency injection, we want to just initiate the email service here. And then we want to call the service down here with the message. So when we run this now, it should all uh, work perfectly fine and we'll print the message. This is your message. Hi, Bob. And there we go. So in this example here, there is no inversion of control. 
actually the cool application is in control of what service is being used and when it's called and what it does. So let's now create an alternative where we will inject the service through the constructor. So I went ahead and created the same classes in a different package. And now we refactor this to use the constructor to inject the email service dependency instead of letting the cool application class instantiate and create this email service dependency by itself. So first, of course, we need a constructor. So create a constructor here and it will accept a email service as a parameter. And it will just say this.service is service. Now we can remove the latter part of the instantiation here. And then the only thing we need to do is pass the cool application when we instantiate it in the main method. Uh, we need to pass it a email service here. So that's what we'll do. New email service. Uh, let's change this message up. And when we run this, we should get a slightly altered message, but it will still be the same way. So here we have a slightly more loosely coupled dependency. We could actually configure the email service before passing it to the cool application. So the cool application wouldn't know exactly what kind of service it would call, but it doesn't matter. It will just send a message through the service and that's it. So what if we want this cool application to not only send messages through the email service, but also through, for instance, a texting service. We could take this dependency injection one step further and use a interface for injecting the service through the constructor. So again, I have taken the code from the previous class and copied it over to a new package. And then let's first start creating a interface for the messaging service. So we will just call it messaging service. And the only thing it will be able to do is send messages. Then we will update the class here to implement the messaging service. We have to make this method public. And then instead of having the constructor accept a email service, it will just accept a generic messaging service. And we also have to change it up here. So right now the cool application takes a messaging service and uh, with that service will send a message. And right now we are passing it a email service. So if you run this through the interface if you run this it will again show a slightly different message down here so it says hi bob through the interface so let's say we want to change the application and implement a uh, texting service it will also implement the messaging service oops send message and then we will say from a text so we have created a texting service that also implements the messaging service and instead of uh, printing this is your message we will print from a text with the message the user wants and then now let's create a new cool application here. Cool application two. And then instead of passing it a email service, we will pass it a texting service. So when we run it, or let it do some stuff. It will still work the same without actually changing any code in the cool application class itself. So from a text, hi Bob through the interface. We didn't touch this code at all. All we did was create a new uh, implementation of the messaging service and then pass that implementation when creating the cool application. So this is a nice example of how you inject a dependency into your application and, uh, and how you then actually take the control away from that application and letting the calling party, in this case, the main class, decide what specific functionality this application has by changing the implementation it passes. It is especially useful to create an implementation of your service and then inject it into your application when writing unit tests. So I've already written a unit test for the cool application class. So let's go there right now. 
Down here at the bottom, you can see I have created a new message surface class, which I've called mock message server. It implements the messaging surface and it just prints a message saying that uh, I'm testing this application with the mock and this is the message. So when we look at the actual test, you can see I have a instance of the cool application here and in the setup method, I instantiate the cool application using the mock of the message surface as a parameter in the constructor. So when we get to this test method and we call the do some stuff method in the cool application, it will actually use the send message method from this mock message surface. I know this is a very small application and a very small demo, but I hope this shows how powerful dependency injection can be. Going back to the example from the beginning, talking about databases, you can see how you can change databases from, for example, Postgres to MySQL by just changing the implementation of the database service, with the, the service that connects to the database. And also in testability, you won't have to test against a live database, but can just inject a mock of the service that will fetch mock data and you can run your unit test against that. Okay, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, please leave a like and a comment and I will see you in the next one. Bye.